Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece, The History of Tony Tony Chopper. Tony Tony Chopper made his debut in One Piece chapter 134, corresponding with anime episode 81. As you can see in the concept art on screen of the whole Straw Hat crew, Chopper originally appeared to have been intended to look a lot older and probably be a more mature character, but he was turned into a smaller and cuter and less mature character when introduced into the series. Oda stated in an FBS that if Chopper was a real person, he would be Canadian. It was stated by Oda in an FBS that Chopper, including his naps, gets a total of 10 hours of sleep every day. Chopper is one of the four Devil Fruit users on the crew. He is the eater of the Hito Hito, Hito Hito no Mi, or in English, the Human Human Fruit. It is a Zoan type Devil Fruit that gives Chopper the characteristics of a human and using the drug he developed called the Rumble Ball had given him multiple transformations that said Horn Point, Monster Point, Heavy Point, and more, and Guard Point, and more than he could use in battle with the enhancement done by the Rumble Ball. Now that we're done giving some fun facts about Chopper, let's dive in to his backstory. Okay, so now let's get started. Chopper was originally a reindeer with the slight oddity of a blue nose, this of course is a play on Rudolph the Red Dog Reindeer, which caused the other reindeer, even his parents, to treat him like an outcast, outcast, always making him follow the herd from the far back. However, when the young reindeer ate the Hito Hito no Mi, or as I said before, the human human fruit, he was even more ostracized from his herd, and with the increased intelligence granted by the fruit, now accurately aware of it, meaning he actually understood that they were being dick. And stuck out on it and snuck out on his own. Unfortunately for Chopper, his attempt at communicating with humans on Drum Island, the island Chopper lived on at the moment, proved treacherous. You see, when people see a talking reindeer, they kind of freak out, so yeah. He was shot by villagers who mistook him for the abominable snowman. Luckily though, he was rescued by the quacked doctor, Dr. Hirolook, who named him and took him in as his friend and assistant. Although his deeds were medically valid, Hirolook became Chopper's role model. Hirolook taught Chopper his philosophy on life that all diseases could be cured, and his strong faith in the Jolly Roger, which is the flag that pirates will fl uh, fly above their ship as a symbol of strength against all odds. The two went from house to house, administering their quote-unquote cures in a country where all doctors were not stationed by King Wapool were banned. When Dr. Hewlett's health took a turn for the worse, Chopper found himself left out in the cold once again, as the old man did not want Chopper to watch him die. The one Chopper found out what was going on, he was determined to find something that could cure his mentor, his one and only friend. He was soon found looking for an Akidate, Akadumgate. I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. You guys want to look it up. I'll put the spelling somewhere on screen or in the description. But a special kind of mushroom with skull and crossbones specifically displayed in the medical book. Unaware of what that sign meant medically due to Met due to Hilda's past praising of the pirates and the Jolly Roger, remembering what he overheard by some villagers saying that a certain type of mushroom can, hear, can heal any illness, Chopper steals Hilda's favorite medical book to find the miracle mushroom. Chopper's journey was a success, even though he risked his life and suffered many injuries. The worst of which occurred when, during his journey into the wilderness, in order to get the mushroom, which was Growing atop a treacherous cliff, he had to cross through the territory of his old herd. Though most of the herd just stopped and stared at him with slight scorn, the leader, a victorious older male 
whose forehead was covered in scarred from combat, wanted to kill him for returning after the herd had ca cast him out. He attacked Chopper in a rage of prejudice, prejudice and spite, and Chopper was forced to fight back, willingly himself to get carried on and get and get the muster, pretty much. Though Chopper knocked the leader aside, the ranger got up immediately, got up and murderously attacked him from behind. Chopper engaged in a fierce fight and won, allowing him to cl claim the miracle mushroom. However, he barely made it out alive. Coming back to Hill Look, very weakened with a broken horn, left horn, dragging a badly broken right leg, covered in many bruises and bloody wounds. Though Chopper made a complete recovery after Hill Look treated his injuries and reattaching his snapped horn with a metal brace, it was painful for Hill to see how. Badly tattered, his son had gotten just for his behalf. Then you have to remember, he'll look through Chopper as his own son, so this is terrible for him. He'll look overwhelmed with tears of gratitude, ate the mushroom to show his love and appreciation for Chopper, despite knowing that the mushroom was actually poisonous and it would end his life. But Chopper would later find out from Dr. Reen or Dr. Kureha that he had given. Dr. Hillock, a fatal dose of poison, but Hillock was not to live much longer anyway, so it kind of like, in the end, it's a big deal. My Declaring that he had a wonderful DJ life. Santa now, I want to point out that in the four kid dub, he declared that he's a doctor. But the reason I want to point this out is because the four kid dub butchered this scene. In the, in the anime, go watch this scene, it's amazing. I may even play it as I talk about it, but yeah. And after thanking Chopper, he committed suicide by blowing himself up outside a drunk castle with a failed potion before being killed by the poison for Chopper's sake. Chopper, who had arrived to try to save him, was so upset over Dr. Hewlett's death that, and so angry that Lapool was making fun of it, he went completely berserk and tried to attack him. Losing all control and running toward the pool with a terrified beastly war, Dalton, who had heard Hero left where he realized that the monster he called his son was trying to attack Wapool. He then stopped him. He then, with tears in his eye, told him that he apologized for, for those who mocked Hero's death and that he could not beat Lapool. And he could not beat Lapool if he could not beat him. So, Brendan was saying, Chopper, you can't beat me, you can't beat Lapool. Chopper was brought out of his grave and then began to tear up as well at these kind words. He went to Kureha. Waving Dr. Hewlett's Jolly Roger outside her house, sobbing heavily, vowing that he would become a great doctor. Now let's continue with Chopper's backstory. As for Hewlett's last wish, Kareha, the last remaining doctor not owned by King Lapool, took Chopper in and taught him real medicine for the next six years. Chopper worked as hard as he could in order to become a doctor like his idol, Hewlett. As his study grew, he eventually developed the Rumble Ball, which could modify Wade Life in a low and double fruit transformation ability, giving him four extra forms. However, during one experiment where he took three Rumble Balls at once, he indirectly took, an took on an uncontrollable form called Monster Point that went on a rampage and nearly wiped out an entire village. Though fortunately nobody was killed, Chopper woke up in one of Kareha's hospital bed, bandaged and having no memory of what happened. Once he had eaten the Wumber Balls, after getting a lecture from he Kureha, three were careful and that, his four that this four posed a danger to his friends, foes, and even himself. He promised to never unleash this monster point form again, of course, until later on during any lobby arc where he realized he had no other choice but to use it. Because he is going to die if he doesn't, and he needs to save his comrade, Nico Robin. But, that is for another video. Let's continue. Chopper's backstory is over. That is all. There isn't much to it. It's a very tragic one, but there's not a lot to it. So I think I'll briefly go over how he joined the crew. So, when Nami falls ill, they, the crew realizes they need a doctor. So they go to the island, and they, you know, find out where Dr. Kareha is. Luffy goes to the top of the mountain where she is, and he meets Chopper, and eventually asks Chopper to join him. Chopper refuses, saying because they are humans, he can never join him, the crew of a human. Luffy then responds with, shut up, let's get going, okay, pretty much telling Chopper. 
that he did not care that he had the reindeer or had the blue nose, or he can talk like a human, he doesn't care. Chopper is his friend, and he went to Mama Crew. Due to his backstory being short, I'm going to go over a little bit more about Chopper, and then talk about some other things about his character. Despite his young appearance, before the time skip, Chopper was 15, and after the time skip, he is 17. He was born on December 24th. Now, the last fun fact I want to give about Chopper before I end out the episode is that Chopper has no sexual attraction to humans. Meaning, obvious, this is obvious, of course, but meaning that that is the reason Nami and Robin are fine with Chopper taking back with them, sleeping in the room, or seeing them naked, because he has even at times been curious as to why Sanji gets so excited when he sees Nami or Robin naked or something. The reason, of course, being he getting turned on, Chopper did not understand it. However, it was recently confirmed in the manga that Chopper does get turned on, and he is interested in females, but only deer females. When a deer female mink was showing attraction to Chopper, Chopper was blushing and was Pretty much love struck. He had hearts in his eyes and everything. So yeah, that was the. I gave a couple extra stats. I know this was a shorter episode, but I'm going to be releasing a video. It probably will. Oh, by the time this is up, the video will probably already be out. But it will be explaining what I'm going to do with this theory and how why I'm handling it the way I'm handling it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed episode 10 of the Beginner's Guide to One Piece: The History of Chopper. And remember to like. Comment and subscribe, and remember to come back next week for episode 11 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece, The History of Nami, which I guarantee you guys will enjoy. But, have a great day!